With me now, syndicated columnist and author of the New York Times bestseller, Things That Matter, Charles Krauthammer. Thank you so much for being with us. I want to start with foreign policy, Charles. I mean, given what has gone on in Iraq, you have said that President Obama really doesn't have a, an identifiable foreign policy, and I think most Americans would agree with you. But this is the United States of America, and I, I want to ask, why do you think that is? Is it because of incompetence? Uh, I mean, this is the president of the United States. Is it uh, the, the not caring? Or is it an intentional decision by the president to reduce America's importance on the world stage? I think it starts with the latter. It does start with that. I think Obama made that very clear from the beginning when he did his uh, confession tour around the world, where he talked about America's sins, overreach in Iraq, torture, everything. Uh, from the maltreatment of the Indians to Hiroshima. His catalog was long. And he gave the impression that America had overstepped. America had kind of lost its moral authority, if it ever had it, to lead the world. And I think he sees America more properly as diminished in its role in the world. Now, you add on to that the fact that he's really an amateur to foreign policy. He's never done this. And I think he was aware of the fact that he was very unsure and as a result, he chose the path of least resistance and of least action just about everywhere. I mean, when you look around the world, Ukraine, Syria, you know, the red line that he flinched from. Mm -hmm. uh, you go to all the places in the world, South China Sea, our allies are looking around and saying, where is the United States that we could count on? And our enemies are saying, looks like America has checked out. Well, for eight years, now is the time to move. This whole thing started with religion and the intolerance. And I, I want to kind of move to the Hamas-Israel uh, Israeli conflict. And what has gone on is very different in terms of European reaction and American reaction. On the one hand, uh, you believe that what's going on in Europe is indicative of an anti-Semitic uh, 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 continent that has it out for the Jews whereas in the United States is more pro-Hamas. Explain what you mean by that. Well, it's not an opinion. I mean, what I'm saying is a fairly good description of the demonstrations that occurred in London, in Paris, even in Berlin, of all places. Uh, crowds chanting death to the Jews, Jews to the gas chamber. Hitler was right. That's pretty anti-Semitic. It is very clear that what's happening in these huge demonstrations in Europe, this intense animus, is a resurgence, a recurrence uh, of anti-Semitism, which had been, after the Holocaust, for half a century, unfashionable. You weren't supposed to be anti-Semitic after what the Nazis did. But those generations are gone. We have a new generation now. And anti-Semitism is back in vogue, and you see it on the streets. In America, I think it's rather different. We don't have a tradition of anti-Semitism. This has been the most welcoming country to the Jewish people in the history. Uh, of the Jews. And I think most of it is largely ignorance. People don't know the origin of the conflict. They're not aware of what Hamas intends, of what Hamas is, of what Hamas's t tactics are. They see a picture or two on television. Their heart is broken, as everybody's heart should be when they see a dead child. They have no context, and they end up saying, well, it must be the Israeli aggressors. That is a far more benign reaction. It's also a far more minority reaction here than it is the anti-Israel, anti-Semitic wave sweeping Europe. All right, I'm going to move now to Hillary Clinton. Um, look, we all know that, that politicians move right or left depending upon the person that they're running against. But uh, most of Hillary Clinton's moves seem to be orchestrated and deliberate, that you could tell that there's been a lot of uh, uh, consideration behind them. Uh, but now what we're seeing is not just a break with, with uh, President Obama, but when she's on her own, it seems she does stupid stuff herself to quote her assessment of President Obama's foreign policy. And if you think about it, Charles, that when she says, uh, you know, what difference does it make? Uh, or when she says, we were dead broke when we left the White House. Or Boko Haram is not a terrorist organization. Or, you know, her role in that uh, terrible Benghazi video. Um, what do you think is, is the real Hillary? I think there's a vast overestimation in the political class, and some of it in the 
among Democrats of Hillary's political skills. She is nothing like her husband, who's probably the most skilled politician of the last 40 years. Since Ronald Reagan, there's been no one like him. I think she makes mistakes. She's very unsure of herself. I think she thinks well, but I don't think she, there's a, I, I think she's unable, I mean, Billy Wilder, the director, once said, uh, you've got to be uh, authentic. You have to be sincere in the movies. If you can fake that, you've got everything. She can't fake it. She can't fake authenticity. Your husband, he bites his lip and he gets away with it. And I mean, people know. They can see the wheels moving, turning in her head whenever she says hello or the sun rises in the east. And they immediately say, now what is she thinking? Why is she doing that? So I think she's got a real problem because she's not an instinctive uh, politician. She has a great resume, a great, uh, a lot of popularity. But Democrats who think she's going to sweep into the White House, I think are making a huge mistake. All right, Charles Krauthammer, it's great to have you on the show. And again, a great uh, summer read, uh, Things That Matter. I've read it myself. Great book. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure.